It was a hurricane of violence. A war machine that selectively murdered, raped and tortured. A war that left behind a generation of widows, warehouses full of bones and a sea of graves. Horrible. It was committed by our neighbours. In the middle of it all, an international tribunal was created to undertake the world's largest criminal investigation, prosecuting those responsible. Now, after almost 25 years, the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia is closing its doors. But what did it really achieve? When my neighbour today is a guy who admitted to kill more than 200 people and he was in jail only for nine years. Is this justice? And did it put politics above the law? I don't think she even told the team, but the litigation was over and we had to stop. Victims will tell you there can be no peace without justice and no justice without the truth. But the challenge in the Balkans is how to dig away the dirt to find it. In the hills of Srebrenica, there's quiet. No gunshots, no bombs, not anymore. More than two decades have passed since neighbor turned against neighbor, friend against friend. Now there is a crushing weight of silence, sorrow and loneliness. They were victims of genocide. Yet all this time later, only a handful of people have been prosecuted. Most of the gunmen are still free. Two thousand kilometers away in The Hague, the ICTY prosecutes the guilty, at least some of them. International tribunals in, in, in general uh, have the mandate to prosecute those who are uh, the greatest responsible for crimes, international crimes committed, because with limited resources you cannot really prosecute everyone. The UN Security Council established the tribunal in 1993, alarmed as the Federation of Yugoslavia tore itself apart. With declarations of independence, nationalist uprisings and ethnic killings. Today we begin to cleanse the hatred that has torn apart the former Yugoslavia. A few months ago I said, this will be no victor's tribunal. The only victor that will prevail in this endeavor is the truth. The worst atrocities were carried out in the newly independent state of Bosnia, as ethnic Serbs, armed by Belgrade, began to carve out their own territory, something they called Greater Serbia. Politically, Radovan Karadzic led the Bosnian Serbs, while Ratko Mladic led its military. Together with Slobodan Milosevic in Belgrade, they orchestrated what prosecutors called a joint criminal enterprise to rid Bosnia of its non-Serb population. We are actually in an area, we are very close to, to the largest mass grave in Europe of the Second World War, Tomasica. 
Survivors like Sudbin Music say genocide began here. This grave contains its first victims. We saw the first of all one lady, his head was outside from the, from the, from the land. And her hairs were so collected. And then we started, for example, at the left side, we, see we had some small, small little mass grave with a couple of guys in. Later, we realized that they are from my village. And then we started to collect another body. They were like sardines. What we have tried to uh, establish with the Tomasicha case was that, well, um, these um, systematic killings also occurred very much in relation to the other municipalities. And so those killings were not the result of combat, but really of, of for, uh, systematic elimination. This all happened in 1992, only a few weeks after Bosnian Serb leaders adopted six strategic objectives which included forcibly dividing Bosnia into ethnic enclaves. Court documents show, at the time, Mladic responded with a chilling warning, saying, we cannot ethnically cleanse, we don't have a sieve to sift so that only Serbs can stay and others leave. I don't know how Mr Karadzic and Mr Krajnik will explain this to the world. This is genocide, people. Before the war, Preidor had a Muslim population of about 40,000, but 10 years later, only 400 Muslims were left. Despite this, the tribunal has never proved genocide was carried out here. Most of the accused have never been tried. Some were convicted, but released early. This man is Momchilo Krajšnik. He founded the Serb Democratic Party with Radovan Karadzic and as the speaker of the self-proclaimed Bosnian Serb parliament gave the go-ahead for the systematic expulsion of non-Serbs. I didn't know why I tried to import such things I was napravio tako mišljenje da se ništa u ovoj našoj državi nije moglo desiti bez da je odlučio od dvojica ljudi. I ja sam u jednom momentu dobio veliki broj neprijatelja na dvije strane. After serving 13 years in prison, he's now back in Pale, a sleepy hamlet not far from Sarajevo. It's from here Bosnian Serb leaders directed their criminal campaigns, though they don't see it that way. Jedino što hoću da kažem da ću sve učiniti da dođe do revizije moje presude, da predam zahtjev. Ja presudu priznajem jer ona je zvanično izdata od meritornog organa, ali nije presuda godine zatvora. Presuda je etiketa koju nosite. Some experts say if the ICTY had indicted Krajšnik properly, he would probably still be behind bars. Momčilo Krajšnik was indicted for the crimes from April to December 92. He was found guilty. Uh, he served his prison sentence. He is now a free man. But what sort of justice is that if prosecution even didn't bother to indict him from April 92 to December 95? It was justice based on the counts of his indictment. What Krajšnik was not indicted for was the worst atrocity committed in Europe since World War II. The massacre in Srebrenica. That happened despite the threat of international prosecution and the fact that in 1993, the UN Security Council put Srebrenica and five other areas under official UN protection. The further we went from Zagreb, uh, I saw it, the, the houses burned, uh, 
uh, shot. Uh, the road was terrible with grenade uh, in, 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 the road, in the road and uh, a lot of people on the streets, poor people. And that was, uh, phew, I was 20 and I, yeah, th this was war. By the time Dutch peacekeeper Budwin Kok arrived in late 1994, the tribunal had been running for more than a year and had just issued its first indictment. But nobody really feared prosecution. In fact, Karadzic had just issued his military a directive to leave the inhabitants of Srebrenica with no hope of further survival or life. Hassan Nohanovic fled there in 1992 with his parents and brother. He ended up working with the peacekeepers as a translator. They all spent a lot of time here at the battery factory in Potocari. It was the enclave's main UN base until Mladic's forces breached the city's defences in mid-1995. The peacekeepers called for backup. UN command refused. Why do you think reinforcements never came? <laughs> yeah, why not? Because I, I think, but it's my opinion, uh, if you want to have peace here in this country, the enclaves must gone. It took Mladic's men only a few days to kill 8,372, mostly men and boys. Bosnian Serb soldiers had buses waiting to deport women and children, and bulldozers ready to bury the bodies. And the truth was there was a genocide going on, and a genocide in July 95, as we refer to it, which people say the Srebrenica genocide, was only the last episode, it was the last episode in the, in, in, in the series of genocidal massacres that began in 92 and ended in 95. The UN expelled civilians from the base. As an official UN employee, Hassan, though, was allowed to stay. His family was not. That's what the Dutch did, and the Dutch were a part of that process of, you know, handing the people over to the Serbs. And my family was among the last on the compound, which was already, it was already the, the uh, late afternoon or evening time of 13 July when they came and told me to tell my family to leave. After the, the refugees were gone here, it was really quiet and we stuck here for three days uh, before we could leave with our vehicles and uh, uh, we were driving out of Srebrenica, Bratunac, to Swanik and Swanik, the bridge, uh, up to, to Serbia and there was standing uh, Miladic and he saluted at us and he, uh, he was smiling. Two weeks later, the ICTY charged Radovan Karadzic and Ratko Mladic with war crimes. A year later, there were international warrants for their arrests. Their victims ended up here in body bags. I can say that we have here approximately 7,000 uh, bags. Of those number, 3,000 it's remains of clothes and personal belongings, 4,000 remains of uh, uh, skeletal material. Dragana Vucicic is the woman they call the Bone Doctor, a forensic anthropologist with the International Commission on Missing Persons. In Srebrenica cases, we don't find completely bodies very often. Maybe in 10% of the cases we find uh, complete bodies. It's a problem with uh, Srebrenica because uh, those people died and buried in primary graves, that, that everything happened in a few days of July of 1995. But uh, in the middle of September and beginning of October, those bodies had been removed to the other locations, but the composition already started. The ICMP helps identify the dead and also helps prosecutors prove murder. 
Sometimes we find ligatures or bullets in the head or on the pelvis, but I think uh, in lots of the cases it's not possible to determine that. Despite all the evidence and international warrants, both Mladic and Karadzic remained free. They moved to Serbia under the protection of Slobodan Milosevic. That was until he himself was charged with war crimes and transferred to The Hague in 2001. These uh, proceedings will be long and complex. I consider this tribunal a false tribunal and indictments false indictments. It is illegal. Carlo Del Ponte led the prosecution. This tribunal and this trial in particular gives the most powerful demonstration that no one is above the law or beyond the reach of international justice. Nevenka Trump was the prosecution's chief researcher. At the same time the tribunal was prosecuting Milosevic, Bosnia was suing Serbia in the International Court of Justice. Sarajevo accused Belgrade of orchestrating the genocide. The Serb authorities uh, were very aware of the fact that the most of documents the prosecution needed to prove Milosevic's criminal culpability were the same they would allow Bosnia and Herzegovina to use as evidence against Serbia. And this is where the interesting arm wrestling between Milosevic trial team and Belgrade started. Not many people in Belgrade were willing to help. Vladimir Vukcevic is Belgrade's first chief prosecutor for war crimes. For security reasons, we meet him in the old offices of a travel agency rather than his home. And while we talk, bodyguards wait outside. What do we want? Sad da ne režem, uhvatili smo nekoliko njih, a međutim, ovo dvojicu glavnih nismo mogli ni da priđemo njima. Sad, sa, sa ovom naklonom pameću, vidim gdje su te bile glavne obstrukcije. Mogu samo da kažem da su te obstrukcije dolazile upravo iz uh, ovaj predstavnika, iz, te, iz državne vlasti, odnosno izvršne vlasti, koja ih je faktički štitila. Vukcevic arrested Karadzic in 2008. He'd been living in disguise in New Belgrade as a New Age healer, Dragan Dabic. He would later be convicted and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Vukcevic also oversaw the transfer of Serbian radical politician Voloslav Šešel to The Hague. He was charged in the same criminal conspiracy as Milosevic. <laughs> Mr. Belo, svetski ološ, kako ja vama mogu da ustane? Ja sam čeknički vojvoda. Stop. He was released for health reasons and later acquitted. So how are you now? I'm very well now. I'm healthy and I'm preparing to take power in Serbia on the next elections. How do you view the fact that he was acquitted? No, it is definitely uh, a case where one has to look at, at lessons learned. So I would say that everything which can go wrong in that case went wrong. Things also went wrong elsewhere. Vukcevic was barred from practicing law when his term in office ended. He was accused of being a traitor for prosecuting Serbs. But others, like Serbian Prime Minister Zoran Đinđić, faced far worse. The only short period where, where we had that political will for, for going deeper and deeper in, in uh, war crime investigations uh, was during uh, Gingis government. As Vezdan Jovanovic was actually the person who, who killed Zoran Gingic, the Prime Minister of Serbia. In, he killed him in 2003 in the action that Red Berets, former members of Red Berets, called Stop the Hague because Zoran Gingic cooperated with, uh, with the Hague. The Red Berets were Serbia's special operations unit. When Djindjic was killed, some of its members, including founder Franko Simatovic, were already under investigation for war crimes. The stakes were high, and prosecutors had to use all the methods they could to dig up evidence. 
Their determination paid off with the discovery of one key video, which linked Serbia's Red Berets to Bosnia, and crucially, to Milosevic. The video was um, um, recorded in 1997 in a small place in the province of Vojvodina. It was a celebration of a um, unit for special operation. Its commander, Franko Simatovic, who was also indicted by uh, a Yugoslav tribunal, actually greets Milosevic and in the speech tells the whole history of the unit. And he shows even the map where unit operated during the wars in Croatia and Bosnia. So we basically had the whole joint criminal enterprise from Serbia pictured in one video produced by their own. Prosecutors say a decade after the war, only 1.4% of the Muslim population remained in the areas related to Milosevic's indictment. But as people across the Balkans demanded justice, critics say the prosecutor's office played politics. Del Ponte had agreed to a secret deal with Belgrade to suppress transcripts from meetings of Serbia's Supreme Defense Council. They exposed Serbia's military involvement in the war including the Srebrenica genocide. In the end, Milosevic escaped conviction, not because of missing evidence, but because he died before the end of his trial. A year later, the ICJ acquitted Serbia of genocide. Serbia never did nothing uh, if, uh, if, if, I mean, Serbian governments, if they, uh, if they were not uh, uh, pushed to do to, the, to do the, the things, you know, uh, Milosevic, Karadzic, you know, every, 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 uh, everybody who were delivered in The Hague, uh, uh, they, they had to do that because um, international community, EU, USA, they insisted on that. It took Serbia 16 years to arrest Mladic, who was officially employed by the Serbian army. <laughs> Mladic was convicted of 10 of 11 counts, including carrying out genocide in Srebrenica. But like Karadzic, he was found not guilty of genocide elsewhere. The ICTY has indicted 161 people and convicted just half. What's more, many of its rulings cleared Serbia and its state actors of wrongdoing. They couldn't find any connection between my volunteers and the war crimes. Because I uh, told my volunteers what they could do in war, what they couldn't do. Justice moves slowly. So slowly, in fact, defendants started to die in custody. And in the tribunal's last major case, Croatian war commander Slobodan Preljak drank poison in the dock and Stop, died. Please. It was a case that ultimately condemned Croatia's wartime leader, Franjo Tuđman, for war crimes. The tribunal did do what it promised, put the architects of war on trial. It's also left behind a startling historical record, more than 2.5 million pages of transcripts and the testimonies of more than 4,600 witnesses. But the war itself has left behind much more. Am I be happy after 22 years? No, I live my life because I'm always thinking about here, especially this place, this, 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 this hall where we try to help 4,000 women and, and children. But, and all those things, what happened here, it's, when I'm quiet now, it's, 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 you hear nothing. You hear nothing. I hear the screaming of the people. I smell the people. I smelled it like 22 years ago. That is what is done with my life. 
a number of peacekeepers have taken their own lives. Others sued the Dutch government for culpability. So too did Hassan. If they think they have this, you know, you know, having PTSD or whatever it's called, then I should have died a long time ago. The tribunal has convicted more than a dozen people over Srebrenica. But for many still alive, no verdict can ever be enough. Evo baš ima jedan od milion dijabu, kao što smo kalemli dola mi jabuku. Predrato, evo je sad rađa i ja sad odi na kupim ti je jabuka i otlačim kao ovo moja djeca kalemla jabuke. Ja sad imam jabuku, ali njiha nema. Njiha je više nema. I to mi je jedna uspomena samo. I ja iziđem iz kuće, gledam onu jabuku, onda vidim njiha dvojicu kod jabuke. The Dayton Peace Accord, which brought an end to the war, carved Bosnia into ethnic territories. 49% was given to Republika Srpska, including Srebrenica and Prejdor. There, outside the concentration camp where Sudbin was held, is a memorial. Not to the camp's victims, but to the Serb soldiers. I hate the stories like everybody are the same, you know, and this is the, the price we have to pay. No, I don't want to pay this price. I need justice. And guys, when I am losing it, you will lose it too. As for reconciliation, across the Balkans, there are three versions of the truth. And for many, war criminals are heroes, and genocide is a myth. We have a whole system which is engaged to hide and not to, uh, not to discover. A smaller tribunal is left to deal with remaining cases. Few have high expectations. So what I've been doing for the last 25 years was fighting for truth and justice. Fighting for truth and justice as a survivor. No one else did it for me, for us. And it's always the case in history, as I can see, that the people themselves who survive these kind of things have to fight for justice by themselves. No one else is going to do it for them.